Hey guys, welcome back to another something in about five minutes. And today we are talking all about beta one adrenergic agonists. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to refresh our memory about is alpha beta one and beta two. Remember that alpha properties lie or alpha chemoreceptors lie within the vasculature and help to dilate and or constrict the vasculature. The beta one properties or beta one chemoreceptors lie within the heart muscle beta 1, 1 heart, and the beta 2 chemoreceptors lie within the lungs, beta 2, 2 lungs. That's how we're going to uh, remember this. Today we're talking specifically about beta 1 adrenergic chemoreceptors. These are, these are things that are going to change heart rate, contractility, and things like that, depending on uh, the, the actions on the sympathetic and or the parasympathetic nervous system. The three effects that we need to be aware of is inotropic, dromotropic, and chronotropic. So let's get started with those. So inotropic are going to cause a change in the force of the contractility within the ventricles. Now this is both ventricles, it's not the left or the right, it's both. And it's going to cause an increase or a decrease in the force or strength of contractility depending on what kind of uh, positive or negative response the drug that you're giving uh, is going to have. So if you are giving a drug that has a positive inotropic uh, you know, response, you're dumping more calcium. More calcium is going to enter the cells, resulting uh, in a stronger ventricle contraction. If you're giving a negative inotropic drug, less calcium is going to enter that the, the heart muscle cells, which is going to produce a weaker, uh, you know, forceful contraction. So uh, these are, remember, these are all going to play on cardiac output. More cardiac output with positive changes, less cardiac output with negative changes. Next, we have chronotropic. Now, I always remember chrono is time, right? Chrono time, chronotropic. We're dealing with time here. And what chronotropic responses deal with is increasing or decreasing the heart rate at the level of the SA node, the sinoatrial node, that, pa that pacemaker of the heart. Okay, so if you are having a drug that's giving a positive chronotropic response, you are going to get more sodium entering the cells of the heart muscle during that action potential resulting in an increase in heart rate. Now, if you have a decrease in chronotropic response, you're going to have less sodium enter those same cells, which is going to decrease the heart rate. Now, lastly, you have dromotropic, and dromotropic is going to change the conduction velocity at the AV node. Now, before I go into the rest of this, remember, after when the SA node fires, it goes down through the uh, the right ventricle into the AV node, and it kind of holds it there. Okay, there's always a pause at the AV node. This is that pause in your EKG between your P wave and your Q wave. So, what the, what this hold, this pause is doing of electrical activity is it's giving time for the atriums to squeeze all that blood down into the ventricles and for the ventricles to, you know, uh, fill up with all of that atrial blood. If there wasn't this pause in the AV node, there would not be enough blood within the ventricles to have an ejection fraction of 70 milliliters, which is what we're looking for with a good strong ejection fraction into the aorta. So we and to the lungs. So we want to make sure that we have this pause. But with dromotropics, we're changing the velocity of this conduction. So we're we're changing the length of that pause. If you have a drug that gives a positive dromotropic response, you more calcium is going to dump into those cells and you're going to increase the electrical conduction through that AV node. If you have a negative dromotropic response, you have less calcium that enters these cells, resulting in a decrease in electrical conduction through that AV node. Guys, this is a quick down and dirty 
uh, you know, overview of the inotropic, dromotropic, and chronotropic beta-1 adrenergic uh, responses. So I didn't really want to go into the drugs that, you know, are inotropic and chronotropic in this video. I figured that was going to be for other videos that really showcase what inotropic is or dromotropic is or chronotropic is. So stay tuned for those. Uh, I will be making those in the near future. But till next time, I will see you guys in the next video.